Every generation of Monster Hunter has brought with it some cool updates to the formula, but not all of them move beyond the generation they were introduced. Monster Hunter World takes some of those scrapped ideas and reinvents them, and with the release of its latest expansion Iceborne, I'd like to cover a few of those old ideas that got reintroduced and improved upon in the latest generation of Monster Hunter. If you've only played Monster Hunter on portable devices, housing may seem like a brand new feature that was added in World, but it's actually been around since the very beginning. Every home console title in the Monster Hunter series has had housing, but considering we went an entire generation without housing, it's understandable that there are people in the community who have not seen it. Rooms in Monster Hunter World can be switched between with ease, whereas in Monster Hunter 1, 2, and 3, you had to pay to switch between versions. In Iceborne, you can fully customize the theme and colors of your room, and with an upcoming update, you'll be able to invite people like in Monster Hunter Try. Although housing in the first two games was originally designed to be a place to change equipment and purchase meals, I'm glad it's getting a few upgrades and attention for the first time in nearly a decade. Of course, rooms wouldn't be nearly as cool as they are if World hadn't given you the ability to keep a wide variety of pets inside them. Poogie and Mufa are fun companions, but being able to liven up your room with the creatures you find while on your journeys is even more awesome. If that wasn't enough to decorate your home, Iceborne brought back commodities that you can place throughout your room. Both the music player and trophy return, along with a whole collection of furniture and armor stands that you can use to fully flush out your place. They are unlocked through quests and DLC similar to the way you unlock them in the 3rd and 4th generation. This update truly allows you to create your own space within the game. Ever since Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, every game has had some sort of partner progression. However, the Palicos in Monster Hunter World seem to be a mashup of all the ideas in the previous games. The gadgets are cool tools that change your Palico's abilities, working like the Shakalaka masks introduced in Try. The leveling system seems to be an expansion of the one introduced in Monster Hunter 4, and even though you're restricted to one cat, if you want another Palico like you had in Portable the Third, you can find some out in the field for your cat to befriend. Heck, even the equipment screen has been refined, so you no longer create obscene amounts of scraps. Overall, the new companion system takes the best aspects of the previous systems and refines them. The Argosy was introduced in Monster Hunter Tri and never quite made its way outside the third generation. However, it's back now. The Argosy allows you to get a wide variety of items within different categories. And unlike Tri, in World, it's not restricted to commodities and bizarre items. You can convert some points into Zenny, get some different monster parts, and even get some useful consumables. Unlike the Tail Raiders, it's a good way to accumulate some useful items without a particular focus on where they come from. Like Palico progression, the equipment progression has undergone a variety of changes throughout Monster Hunter's life cycle, and the equipment upgrades in World also seem to take ideas from a variety of games. Armor now upgrades in a similar manner to the way it did in Monster Hunter Portable Third and Generations, where you need to contribute a certain number of different spheres and materials in order to progress. You can augment your equipment, which is effectively an enhanced version of the honing system from 4 Ultimate. You can mod your bowgun, like you could in Monster Hunter Try, though there's still no weight stat. And the weapons seem to follow the same upgrade system that's been in the game since launch, but now you can view the full trees and undo unwanted upgrades. Overall, the system allows you to have the best features from the previous games. Well, except when it comes to decorations. One of the coolest parts of the world in Monster Hunter World is that you can visit any locale for as long as you want. The only other generation you could spend an endless amount of time in was the third generation, where you could head to the Moga Woods and explore it to your heart's content. While you were limited to going to the deserted island, monsters would come and go as they do in World, 
With the new version of this idea, you can hunt away, store items, change equipment, and do everything endlessly without ever seeing a loading screen. After experimenting with underwater mechanics, the Monster team decided to go in a different direction, giving the players an expanded moveset in the air. Initially this meant that most weapons got a couple of attacks that they could use off a ledge, which they could use to mount, but it finally came to fruition in World. Now not only do weapons have the ability to mount off of an air attack, but they usually have an entirely different playstyle in the air. On top of that, you can now transition from a grounded state to being airborne in a variety of ways, rather than just jumping off of a ledge. You can climb ridges, slide off slopes, and take to the skies with the glider mantle, swing with a wedge beetle, allowing you to fight the beasts in the sky in their own domain. Iceborne takes the concept of one step further, not only allowing you to latch onto and off of the environment, but also giving you the ability to leap onto creatures. The Clutch Claw enables the player to reach any part of the monster if they're willing to risk getting hit for it. Few people have had the opportunity to play them, but there was one game in the Monster Hunter series that had minigames. No, I'm not talking about Treasure Quest or even the Meowster Hunter games, but rather actual arcade style games. And of course, those games are locked behind Monster Hunter Doses Online Mode. Doses is one of the most experimental games in the series, and introduced a lot of staples to the series, such as barrel wrestling. Cool interactions like the Songstress House, a PvP arena, and a classic shooting gallery could all be played in Dendorma. While Iceborne may not have the same variety of minigames, it does contain its own Steamworks minigame. You gamble your coal in the hopes of getting some extra rewards, by trying to press the right buttons to increase the steam. It's a fun way to get some new stuff. Originally, Yukima's Gathering Hall was the only place you could visit a hot spring. These hot springs worked like the canteens and feline kitchens, allowing you to get some cool buffs before your next quest. Similar to farms from previous games, as you progressed, you unlocked upgrades for your hot spring, making it even more powerful of a tool. Unfortunately, Portable III never made its way outside of Japan, and it seems like the spas would be lost to the sands of time, as it only got a slight nod in Generations Ultimate. Luckily, Seliana brought back the springs and gives them some awesome additions. You can still change into your bathrobe and use gestures in the water with your cat, but there are now slides, cute monkeys, a palico footbath, and a sauna. It's nice to see this feature back in action with an expanded set of interactions, and I'm sure it'll make the Gathering Hall far livelier than it was in World's Base Game. The biggest expansion in Iceborne has to be the endgame. Spoiler warning, naturally. After you beat the story, you're sent to a new locale. You can raise the level of the areas and discover unique monsters. It's basically a fully realized version of the Everwood and guild quests. Except instead of grinding for RNG relics, you're looking for unique monster parts and gathered items. You no longer have to spend hours raising each guild quest, instead you can go out and fight monsters of a particular region and unlock investigations. The guiding lands may still have a few issues, but they feel far more engaging than the recent post-game quest systems. There are plenty of other old ideas that got a fresh coat of paint in both World and Iceborne. I'm sure I've overlooked a few. But that's my list of the returning features in the latest games. I can't wait to finally be able to play the game again. But until next time, happy hunting. And eventually I'll stop procrastinating making these videos.